Okay, now you you told me you're not really retiring, you're just stepping aside as far as Phil's handler. That's correct. What's, what's happening is, I've been in the club for 20 years as a member of the Groundhog Club Inner Circle. 15 of that, uh, Steve, I've been uh, Phil's handler. And I still have the energy and the time, but I think it's time also that we bring maybe somebody in a little younger and let them do it, okay? Uh, because when I first started doing this, I was 36 years old. I'm now 56 years old. And what I'm saying is the energy level is not the same at 56 as it was at 36. But again, I don't plan on going anywhere. I don't plan on doing anything truly any different. The only thing you're going to see is the morning of uh, February 2nd, somebody else will bring them out of the stump, okay? Uh, and they will maybe take them to a lot more social events than I do, okay? But I'm still going to help those people. I'm going to still be their quote-unquote mentor if I can be and, uh, and still work with them. How much of a commitment do you have to have to handle Phil 365 days a year? Well, Groundhog Day is not a one-day event, as you folks have figured that out real quick. Really what's happening is, uh, you know, I must maintain him throughout the year, the other three, 364 days. And again, if he gets sick, i got to take him to the vet. If he wants to, we're going to have a parade or something going on, I have to take him to that. So there's many different things that, uh, you know, throughout the year. And there's, there's some weeks that it, it's a pretty quiet week. And then there's other weeks that your feet never hardly touch the ground. You're on a dead fly all the time. What is Phil's diet? This, this groundhog lives like a king. He truly does live like a king. Uh, he is a true vegetarian by nature, but what happens is, uh, you know, I give him some apples, I'll give him an occasional banana, things like that. Uh, in, also in captivity, I also give him a little bit of dried dog food. And what I'm, once, what I'm looking for there, if he needs a snack, he can take a snack with that, uh, and it, it will supplement uh, some of his their, uh, dietary needs that he also needs. Let's go back to when Bill Murray um, analyzed or not, he came to Groundhog Day to get the feel of it. What was that like for you to be around Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, right before the phenomenon of Groundhog Day, the movie began? Yeah, what happened is uh, they came and they wanted to sort of be just a mixture in the crowd and that truly didn't happen because you recognized their face, okay? But again, it was a lot smaller event back then. Uh, they would then just walk out of the crowd, walk into the dark, okay, maybe go smoke a cigarette or whatever, then come back in until they were recognized again. And then they just really wanted to be observers and just see how Groundhog Day went and how everything like that. But one of the dumbest things I ever did that day, Steve, when, a ground, when actually we did the ceremony, when it was over, he had a ball cap on. I took his ball cap, I wore his ball cap, and I gave him my top hat. But before he left Punxsutawney, I got my top hat back and gave him his ball cap back. You know what I'm saying? Which was stupid on my part. That's one of the dumbest things I probably have ever done uh, during my tenure. And if I could have repeated or done something different, that would have been something. Talk about when you saw the movie Groundhog Day. When I first seen it, uh, I didn't realize it just over and over and over and over, every, you know, that this is what we do every day. And really... It's part of life. I mean, you get up and you do the same. You go and you know, go to the bathroom. You shave. You shower. You know, get yourself dressed. You go to work. You do whatever. And uh, no, I was impressed with the movie. I really was. I, and I think also too, uh, the public in general was impressed with the movie because it was the tenth uh, top uh, grossing movie in the United States, and actually did play better over in uh, Europe than it did here. They depicted the whole event very well. You told me that a couple years ago. They, they, they treated Groundhog Day with respect, and of course there was humor in it. You liked the way, though, they depicted the whole uh, yeah. event. Yeah, overall I thought they did a, a pretty good job in depicting how Punxsutawney is and whatever. I mean, our police, their police cars were identical to our police cars. Our police uniforms were identical to their police uniforms. Um, but it really, the, the movie was just exactly what we do, except for the bachelor uh, auction. 
I which mean, I may a, participate well, in. Well, maybe we'll have a bachelor, a bachelor auction in the future. It could be something that uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe that, we can get started. If you want to raise money, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, yeah. We don't yeah. want to raise so, money with him. Huh? I, <laughs> this is the abuse I have to put up with. Did you ever foresee Groundhog Day? Danny Rubin said in an interview we, we did with him a couple of weeks ago at the IT Academy, Danny Rubin, writer of Groundhog Day, said he did not realize how huge Groundhog Day Became. I agree. Uh, and again, I never realized how big it was. My first day in, in 1986, I met up there that morning about 6 o'clock. Uh, we got out of the car, we went down, we found some of the guys that were sitting in a car parked down close to the knob, tapped on the window, and they said, Go get some coffee and donuts for us. So, as the, as the young rookies, we went up and got them some coffee and donuts. And uh, it was a crowd that at that time of about, oh, 1,100 uh, people, 1,200 people. I mean, it was hardly anything uh, compared to today's numbers, but we thought it was big, okay? We then did the ceremony, left the ceremony, went to the country club, had breakfast. I helped bust some tables uh, to get some other more folks in to be seated, went and got the mail, and was back in my office at 8.30 in the morning. Where today, I mean, uh, since the movie... And then it, we had the movie, and it was very successful. Then right after the movie, we then started hitting some weekends. And it was no longer just a day trip or just a, an overnighter, it, where people would come, tra jump on a plane and literally come here and spend three or four days or a week. Did you guys get kind of caught off guard um, with that first significant crowd? Because was this something you didn't foresee happening as far as it exploding into the national ph international phenomenon that it is? Yeah. I, I really did. I mean, uh, we didn't know what we had. That's the best way to explain it. Uh, because at that time, it was just a cute, cuddly little thing that happened in a little cute, cuddly little punks of Tawny. And it just snowballed, 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 and just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, just about got to a, to a point where, whoa, we now have to slow this thing down and get ourselves organized even better to control everything. In the 20 years you've been a part of this, in the 15 years, especially handling Phil, what are some of the finer moments, the things that you'll cherish? Well, I, I think I'll always remember the first time that uh, I ended up as Phil's handler, you know, and remember that morning, you know, very explicitly. Uh, uh, I also will remember two or three years later, uh, we started shooting fireworks off and all that booming and doing whatever going off around there, Phil got excited and Phil got scared and started digging his way out of the back of the stump and it was uh, the stump needed to be replaced anyway and I, usually when I open up in the morning, there he is. I mean, there he is. I mean, he's right there. And what happened was um, that morning I opened up and he wasn't there. And I happened to look up to our president at that time, Bud Dunkel, and I said, Phil's not here. You know, and he says, you better come up with something real quick, because he said the cameras are rolling. So, you know, you see all this sawdust moving around and stuff in there, and I reached in and grabbed a hold of him and pulled him out, and, you know, uh, I'll remember that. And I, and I probably will remember my last day, too. Handling Phil is easier said sometimes, harder to do. You've got to develop a rapport with Phil. Because you've talked about other people trying to handle Phil, and they're not too sure, and Phil detects that. Correct. Yeah. Now, if, if Phil is a wild animal, and you've got to respect him as a wild animal. And what happens is, uh, I think we put off some vibes ourselves that... Uh, we're not comfortable with him or we're afraid of him or doing whatever. He senses those vibes. And what happens there is uh, he can take advantage of you. You know what I'm saying? If he gives you the sli slightest little opening, you're done. You know, he's going to bite you. He's going to nip you before you even get started. So then you're going to be more afraid of him and you're going to send off more bad vibes and, you know, whatever. And it's going to get, the, you know, he's just going to eat you for lunch. Are some of the guys in the inner circle a little intimidated and a little scared to handle him? Not to get anybody yeah. in the inner circle mad, but have you no, seen that? No, look? we're not going to make anybody mad in the inner circle. What's happened is uh, uh, there's about probably eight to ten that won't even touch him. Yeah, I mean, they'll just say, there he is. Uh, and the other uh, four to five uh, will touch him, okay? Uh, but they're not comfortable doing it, so... Uh, 
But no, it, it, it it's going to work. It's gonna I work. handled him. You get, Now, I did not was know. a year or two ago. Yeah. I did not know what I was getting into. Sam was thoroughly intimidated by the size of the groundhog. And oh, you asked me. Boy. Well, <laughs> he's, big, he's big. And so are you. Wow. But the, the. I smell better, though. Yeah. Well, that's kind of debatable. But you handed them to me. And he was fine. I wasn't scared of him. I just did he detect that? Okay, this guy's just, not scared. He basically said, "Bare hands, too. He said, no this gloves." Guy, this guy's not afraid of me, so I'm going to participate with him. I'm not going to uh, take advantage of him. Uh, but again, it was just a short period of time. If we would have went on three 10, seconds, if, well, if we would have went on uh, <laughs> ten, fifteen minutes, you know, what I'm saying. It might have been a lot more than that too. So uh, um, I agree with yeah. you there. That that was a. But you know, I people that watched that particular show said you held him without gloves. What were you thinking? And True. I, I True. said only three seconds. though. True. True. Were you waiting? Were you, that, but were again, you waiting I, for him to get no, me? Or? No, I was not waiting for okay. you. To get, but I was there for your rescue if you needed it. Okay. <laughs> but no, you were holding him properly, and he was going to put up with that for a while. And I think a lot of the other folks, you'll see that they hold him where he's dangling, and it's like a child. If you hold the child where it's dangling and it's not secure, this is why, you know, when mother holds the child close to, to her and uh, the child stops crying. Talk about the other duties you had as Phil's handler. You talked about touring around the state, and, and what was that like? Because you, you got to meet so many people. That had to be one of the bright spots of your job, meeting so many people. Not just famous people, but people around the world. Yeah. No, you mean, I mean, you meet an awful lot of just common, ordinary people. Uh, you also meet uh, the governor of the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, we were invited to go to his inauguration, and uh, that was fun. Uh, you get chances to go to different parades in the area, you know, whether they be a fireman's parade or whatever they're having in their community as far as their little celebration. And... Uh, no, overall, you know, we've had really had some great times. Really have. I will miss that. What about today? I we talked to the people who shot you and Mike Johnston for the Va Vaseline intensive care commercial. I asked him, "Did you need any coaching?" And he said, he didn't say that. He said, <laughs> "Absolutely not. You were naturals. Do you realize how natural you you are for this job? And those are going to be." Big shoes to fill well, for the next handlers. Every, remember, everyone is replaceable in this world. And what I'm saying to you is, uh, no, it, it can happen. Uh, but, you know, there, there's going to be somebody to replace us. So the other thing is, Mike and I have done this for an awful long time. So, you know, we are very comfortable working with each other. Uh, and, again, we, uh, we, can, we can spread it along pretty good, too. What is the one thing you're going to miss the most? Probably the people. It's like I said, I've enjoyed the people uh, and things like that. But again, in some other ways, though, I do need a little freedom. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, there's been lots of weekends that uh, there's an awful lot of other things I'd rather would have been doing. You know, been tied up. I mean, I think this week or this summer, I think we did nine out of ten weekends there in a row. We were doing something. And uh, uh, if you're off, yeah, in some ways I like to be off also. How many interviews? I won't say through the year. Let's concentrate on the week leading up to Groundhog Day, the final couple of days. How many interviews do you grant or you do? Oh, I, I couldn't put a number to it. Uh, I'll be truth with you. The other morning I got out of the sh I was just got out of the shower and the phone rang and the, and the just happened the extend phone was right there and I ended up I'm tiling off, drying off, uh, talking to Denver, Colorado on a, to a radio station out there. So there's just numerous, numerous, numerous uh, uh, interviews that you do prior to Groundhog Day that day, and it's even unbelievable the amount we do through the through the year. You won't miss that as much. Well, no, I mean, yeah, um, some of them are work and some of them are fun. It's like different assignments that you've shot. You know, there's yeah, assignment, there's some that are. Well, fun every that, assignment's yeah, fun for yeah. us. I mean, come on, and uh, you know, with Sam, you know, with me, there's never a dull moment when you. Look back on 20 years. Let me ask you about your wife. Your wife was very kind to us last year. The sacrifices the wives make oh, for make, you guys. Tell yeah, us about they, that. The wives have to be very, I mean, uh, 
uh, my wife has been just super. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, different times we've had some young groundhogs and raising them at home or raising them in your kitchen for the first two or three weeks. And, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, they, they, they were really good about it, about the whole thing and, and helpful. Documentary though that did come out. I know that what was special about that was that working with the Groundhog Club, you don't just work with them. You don't have access. You have to earn it and you have to be accepted. We were very honored because we didn't realize how hard it was to have this access. It's like the CIA. Your impressions of the the. The life and times of Punxsutawney Phil, the documentary. I thought it was a good. I can, yeah. What I recall from it, it was good. And again, I think it's like anything else. Uh, you know, you folks earned your respect through us, and and we re earned our respect back to, uh, through to you. But no, I thought it was a good uh, documentary. Uh, you portrayed us well. You portrayed the town well. Uh, very educational, and you also showed the fun side. You showed the working side. And I think uh, everybody got to see just a little bit of how the whole thing does click. My favorite part is the Attack Phil segment where we were talking earlier about Phil. You did that, you, you, again, during the documentary you brought up, well, you know, Phil wants to get rid of you. He's going to scare you away so he can get back to do what he's doing. And a lot of folks said you know, they loved that segment because, it, 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 because you also stressed on there, you guys handle him. Everybody else is kind of the pretender. Correct. If you if you watch all our co competition here that'll be on the different newscasts, uh, whatever, throughout uh, the, the TV and whatever, uh, you'll find that we are the only ones that hold them. Everybody else, uh, you know, either has them in one cage and they chase them out or another cage or whatever. Uh, but no, they never touch them. The other thing is, where did they come to f film the movie Groundhog Day? They came to Punxsutawney. Why? Because we are the true weather capital of the world. You know what I'm saying? Where we had a, uh, they had other opportunities to go places that were closer, mm -hmm. okay, to whatever. Uh, but no, we we truly earned their respect and them through what we do, and uh, this is why we become number one. And how many Groundhog Club uh, members or other Groundhog clubs uh, around the country do you have, or what? what yeah, do you we, call we those? call those chapters. Chapters. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. How many? Uh, how many Groundhog uh, chapters? Do you we have? probably have 50 or better. 50 Groundhog chapters, and I mean, we have, uh, there's some overseas, uh, there's some down in the Keys, there's one down in Florida in the Keys, I do know that. Uh, we all want to go down and visit them and uh, see how, how they conduct their meeting and uh, I'd like how to go they with do you. that. But, uh, um, no, they're just all throughout the world, it really is. All right. Okay. Thank you. We're ready to go. Thank We're rolling. You. Yeah. The wives. Yeah. Your wife has um, obviously sacrificed. Uh, let's do it again. Yeah. Your wife has obviously sacrificed. Talk about that. Yeah, they've been very receptive to uh, you know this whole thing and very supportive through this whole uh, uh, time of the I've been handler. You know, from helping uh, raise the young groundhogs in our home or our kitchen uh, to uh, going on various trips with us. You know, I mean, as your your companion or you know whatever. And there's been there's been many times too that we've just jumped in the film mobile, four guys and four wives and taken off and uh, you know ended up uh, having a good time along the way, but uh, but no it's been very time consuming for them uh, and also very very many times that we were they were by themselves when we were out doing these things. How do you raise a ground dog? You've brought Phil home. How do you do that? Uh, with a lot of tender, loving care. You know what I'm saying? This basically will start feeding them uh, just out of a little baby bottle to a hypodermic needle to a little bit of everything. And once I get them going, I start them out a little bit of hamster food. That's how and I started then, eating. There yeah, you go. Exactly. Then, yeah, just, um, you also, and uh, we did a documentary a couple of years ago, and people had approached me and said, boy, it's... You know, this you know, Phil's handler, Bill Dealey, great guy, and you know, it's such a great job to handle Phil, but you're a funeral home director, and they weren't begrudging what you do, but you're going from a very happy, joyous time to one where you're obviously dealing with a range of emotions. Here, yes, yes, you are, but again, it's, it's, it's a funeral home which you're giving service, and the funeral service, you know, is uh, very rewarding. I mean, you know, you're helping... 
folks through one of the most devastating periods of their lives. Um, you're, you're handling their loved ones and uh, you know you must treat them with a lot of respect and thus in turn those families treat you with an awful lot of respect. And uh, uh, I enjoy it. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be here. Uh, if I didn't enjoy Phil's, uh, as Phil's handler, I wouldn't have hung around for so long. Uh, uh, and again, I've been here in the funeral business uh, for over 30 years. So uh, I've liked it. I've enjoyed it. We're um, just about 24 hours under, I guess, 24 hours away. What is going through your mind now and what is, what is, what are your feelings leading up to this, uh, this final? Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be, um, I don't know. I might be a little sad that it's over. Uh, I might be, uh, wow, no more of this, you know what I mean, you know, and whatever. Uh, but no, I, I just plan on, I don't plan on running. That's not my, I don't plan on walking away. You know, from the rest of the folks, whatever. Uh, I still plan on uh, being part of the, the program. Uh, uh, I'm going to be right there if if somebody needs a hand for whatever. Uh, uh, I'm going to get another different little view of how Groundhog Day has been. I enjoyed the first five years and loved the last 15, and I'm going to get I'm going to step back in another role, and we'll just see what happens from there. Real quick, let's talk about the new handlers of Phil. Um, it takes special people to do that, so it's not just anybody. Let's talk about the gentleman. I know the, the, the gentleman's going to handle him next year. Give us a little insight yeah. about the guy that's got to fill your shoes. Yeah, here. well, what's going to happen is uh, I've been told that they're going to basically do a co-handler uh, where John uh, Griffith and Ben Hughes are going to sort of take turns doing it, and I think they'll also take turns uh, caring for him. They'll take turns... Uh, uh, getting him out, maybe John will do the odd years, Ben can do the even years, however they work that out, that's up to them. Uh, and again, I plan on working with them, I plan on helping them, I plan on just doing a little bit, uh, just doing things different, uh, but still being part of the program. Well, with Ben, we know he can dance well. Um, you know, we've seen him on stage cutting the rug. You could, could probably, if Phil knows how to dance, that'd be a heck of a groundhog well, day. They, they, they might have their own program, you know, make... They might bring a different angle to this whole thing, too, and maybe we're going to do things different. Maybe we'll get Phil that he can come out, and we'll set him on top of the stump, and instead of him just standing there, maybe he'll dance. And if he does a little dance one way or <laughs> dances that way or do whatever, that uh, there'll be a shadow or no shadow. We'll figure it out. But they'll work it out. Well, we're under 24 hours uh, away, and we're going to follow Bill throughout his day. Hope you got a good idea of how special this day is. It is fun. There's a lot of, of caring and a lot of pride that goes into this day. And uh, we're looking forward to, again, we're what, if my math is right, we're about 23, we're, we're 21 hours away. So we're looking forward to tagging along with okay. you. Thank you. And we're going to have more fun. That's what Groundhog Day is all about.